Hello and welcome to another analysis behind the news where we provide the perspective that you can use to help save American liberty and independence. Today we look at a tale of two protests, how London and France protested climate change. So over the weekend, the BBC reported on two protests occurring in the EU, one in London and another throughout France. According to the BBC, the protest in London was organized by Extinction Rebellion, which organized about 6,000 people to block five bridges. Their overall demand was for government to take greater action on climate change. Now, protesters claim that they truthfully believe we're all heading for extinction, even though the UK passed the Climate Change Act 10 years ago, which was supposed to reduce greenhouse gases by 80% by the year 2050. Again, in the BBC report, protesters demand a seismic shift in society because of climate change and are encouraging shifting away from building new roads, stopping fracking, and not to expand aviation. Meanwhile, over in France, between 258,000 and 346,000 people took to the streets to protest climate change as well except they had kind of a different take on it. And they took to the streets to protest the increase in gas and diesel taxes that have gone up by 23% in the last 12 months, with another round of increases coming January 1st, 2019. According to one online source, the average liter of unleaded gas or diesel in France is equivalent to about $6.30 per gallon by U.S. standards. Euronews.com suggested that of the total price of fuels, 60% is in the form of government taxes. The reason for these taxes? Euronews also reported that the government was increasing the carbon tax so the country could keep its commitments towards fighting climate change and greenhouse gas emissions, end quote. They want to force the French people off of fossil fuels. Now in France, the fuel tax and the carbon tax goes to fund programs for transportation infrastructure as well as eco-friendly projects and the transition to greener technologies, again, according to Euronews. Now, as we mentioned last week, it doesn't make a difference what you believe about man-made climate change. What does matter are the solutions being forced on the people. And the solutions from the climate change forces have been manifested in increasing government control. And what happens to the size and cost of government when the scope of government increases? They go up too, don't they? So instead of rolling back the scope, size, and cost of government, the French government plans on even more government, including extending energy subsidies to 2 million more citizens, doubling a state scrappage bonus on polluting vehicles, as well as increasing fuel tax credits for those dependent upon their car for work. The French government is also opening up discussions to let cities start charging entry fees to drivers. Now, let that one sink in a little bit, and then let's place a little American perspective on it. How many cities do you drive through to go to work? What would happen if that happened here? Now, put those pieces together, and you'll see a government that is following the United Nations Agenda 21-2030 protocol of placing the environment above the needs of the people, clamping down on the freedom to travel while taxing the poor enough to herd them into the cities where, of course, they can take advantage of public transportation. Of course, those in the cities are much easier to control by the government. Now, 26 years ago, we warned of this danger coming to America through radical environmentalism. And then seven years ago, we led the fight to withdraw scores of towns, cities, and some states 
from this UN program that indeed had arrived in America and is still here today. France has merely advanced to the next stage of this globalist plan. But the French backlash that has only garnered them one dead, more than 400 hurt, and additional crushing government that continues to withdraw liberty in exchange for government macro and micro management. We wonder if this is what the Extinction Rebellion in Britain wants to see. Because they are parroting the same talking points as those globalist planners that want to see government making all of your choices for you. The more government control there is, well, the easier it is for that control to be transferred to an even larger unaccountable government above that until all countries have been rearranged into a new world order directly under a one world government. So for those that argue for sustainable development, be cautious about differentiating between individual responsible stewardship and government mandated control. We anticipate seeing much of this come up for debate in Congress this year. And you should be alert in your own communities and states given the election turnover in many areas. And if you're passionate about protecting and restoring American liberty and independence, then you won't find a more effective local grassroots program than the John Birch Society. We invite you to apply for membership at jbs.org as well as to sign up for our email and news alerts. Together, we will succeed. And until next time, we'll see you then.